In this video, I tried beating Terraria's Thorium mod, and here's what happened. In case you don't know, Thorium is one of Terraria's most popular mods, and it adds hundreds of new items and weapons. It also adds three new weapon classes and a ton of new bosses. And my goal in this video is to see if I can beat all of the bosses, including the Primordials, the final bosses of Thorium. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it because it helps the channel out a lot. And also subscribe if you want to keep watching these videos, because if you don't, then I'll be sad. Also, this video has a sponsor, but more on that later. As you might have already noticed, this video is pretty long, so grab a snack and a drink, and let's get started. I spawned in, and the first thing I noticed was that I had a material in my inventory which I could use to make a weapon called Mjolnir, which is crafted after beating the final boss of Thorium. I got some wood, and I saw that I could craft two new weapons, a wooden whistle and a wooden baton. The wooden baton was a healer weapon which just spun around and knocked enemies back, and the wooden whistle was a bard weapon, and it gave me this thing on the top of my head which kind of worked like mana, and like mana once it ran out it also refilled automatically. Then after making some more houses using the insta houses I went exploring. I found a living tree and while I was looting it I noticed a new ore, it was called aquamarine. And it turned out to be a gem and had pretty much all the functions the other gems had. After reaching the bottom of the tree, I got a band of regeneration and headed home. There I ran into the merchant who was selling thrower class weapons now, but I couldn't afford any of them. Then using the iron I found in chests, I crafted a harmonica which was a bard weapon. And it was kind of like a shotgun and it did some really good damage. I made some more houses and by the time I finished it was already night and I still needed to explore. And while I was exploring, I found a fallen star which I realized was used to craft another material called arcane dust which is pretty important. But before I got to that, I ended up dying to this new enemy called the biter. Anyways, I crafted arcane dust and I combined it with an aquamarine to make a magic weapon called stun which literally stunned enemies. And I realized that you could craft one of these for each gem and then combine them to make a magic weapon called the magic staff which sounded really interesting. So from this point on I decided to use the mage class. The only problem was I needed a lot of fallen stars but for some reason in thorium fallen stars be falling a lot so I was easily able to get a lot of them. I also once again ran into the biter and when I killed it it dropped a material called blood which was honestly pretty useless for me since it was mainly used to craft healer class stuff. Then I found a desert biome and I got a lot of Cactus to see if I could maybe use it to craft anything, and upon returning home, I used it to make a thrower weapon called Cactus Needles. Then I found a snow biome, and when I killed a slime, it dropped a new material called Icy Shard, which could be used to make some good weapons and armor, so I wanted to get a lot of that. I also ran into a new enemy called Snowball, which was actually a really cool enemy, and something I realized more and more when I played this mod is that it completely has the vibe of Terraria. I once saw someone say that Thorium feels more like a DLC to Terraria than a mod, and I completely agree with this. Anyways, I only got enough ice shards to be able to make a magic weapon called Ice Cube, and it's shot a sliding cube of ice but while in the ice biome i found some gems so i was able to craft an ignite and poison and you can probably guess what they did i also made an accessory called a mana bobble which increased my maximum mana by 10 then after dying again i decided that exploring right now was probably not the best option so i started working on a elevator so that i could also mine a bit and while i was mining i found a new gem called opal then once i returned home i crafted more magic weapons after that i once again started farming enemies to get ice shards While down there, I also found another ore called Thorium Ore. Which I used to make a new crafting station called the Thorium Anvil. Then I made some icy armor, which looks cool as hell. Then at this point, I checked the first boss I had to fight, and it was called the Grand Thunderbird. Before I fought it, I decided to finish getting the magic staff and increase my health a bit. And while mining, I found two new ores called Life Quartz and Smooth Coal. Smooth coal was pretty useless, but by using life quartz you can make life crystals, so that made it pretty useful for now. Then after I got some diamonds, I headed home and I made some life crystals. To craft a magic staff, I just needed an amber and by using an extractinator I was able to find one. So I was able to make the magic staff. I also made an iron shield which gave me an extra 10 health, a sapphire ring which increased magic damage by 1, and finally I made a summoner weapon called enchanted barrier wand which summoned a shield around me. At this point 5 days had passed, and I was starting to have a lot of NPCs move in. 
and I decided to not focus on building by hand for now, since my original plan was to make my base look good. Anyways, after that, I reached the end of the world. And in the ocean biome, while I was checking for water tests, I found a lot of new enemies, and also a new biome, but I had to return home before I drowned. I also realized how good the magic staff was, since it inflicted a bunch of debuffs on enemies. After crossing the dungeon, I found yet another biome called the Graveyard Biome. And in the middle of it, there was this weird altar, and when I clicked on it, this is what it said. So I just assumed that you fight a boss there at some point, and I was right. Anyways, after reaching the ocean biome, I returned home, made some more housing, and decided to fight the first boss. I made a grand flare gun and a storm flare, which when used in the desert biome spawns the boss, and after making an arena, I used it, and I spawned the grand thunderbird. I'd be crying if I look like that too, bro. That's fucked up what they be doing to y'all. The Thunderbird dropped me some cool items. It dropped me a summon weapon that spawned a smaller Thunderbird that shot lasers, an item called Zephyr's Feather which gave me the ability to fly for a short period of time, and finally a material called Sandstone Ingot. Using the ingots, I made a magic weapon called the Wind Gust. At the same time, I also had another NPC movement called the Cobbler, who sold shoes, and I bought the Wizard Shoes from him, which boosted my mana regeneration. I had another NPC movement called the Desert Echolite, and I bought a magic weapon from him called the 8 plague and it shot bugs. Then I made a king slime spawner and I spawned him in. The fight was the same which is why I was able to easily beat him. Afterwards while I waited for night I went mining again to increase my health and I maxed out my health. And since at this point it was night, I spawned in the eye, and I usually like to have Hermes boost for this fight, which is why I struggled during its last phase. But I was able to beat it. At this point, I also had everything I needed to set up a magic storage system which allowed me to store everything in one place. Once I was done with that, I checked the next boss I had to fight, and it was called Patchwork, who spawned automatically during blood moons. So I crafted a blood tier to start the blood moon once it was night. In the meantime, I made my way to the ocean again to explore the new biome, and above it, I found a lot of new enemies, who dropped a new material called Depth Scales. But then I realized I couldn't mine the blocks yet, so I had no choice but to head back home. Then at night, I started the blood moon, and I was able to find the patchwork pretty easily. and the fight was super easy. It did drop me a sick weapon called Gravebuster that summoned hands out of the ground that did some good damage and were great for crowd control. Enemies during the Blood Moon also dropped a new material called Unholy Shards, which was once again not really of any use to me, but it could be turned into another material called Purified Shards, but that was also pretty useless. Then I upgraded my Mana Bobble into the Tide Stone, which increased my max mana and mana regeneration. Once the Blood Moon was finally over, I started making preparations to fight the Brain of Cthulhu. In order to make traveling through the world easier, I made this thing called Insta Track, which created a minecart track across the whole world. Once I reached the Crimson, I followed protocol and made an arena then destroyed the hearts and then beat the brain. Then I made some crimson armor. And I noticed a dryad selling a new mount called Amphibian Egg, which turned me into a frog. Cool. I also made the spawner for the next boss called the Queen Jellyfish, and as I was making my way towards the ocean, I also had a meteorite land, so I made my way back home, but I wasn't able to find one. So for now, I gave up on that and decided to fight the next boss first. After making an arena, I spawned in the Queen Jellyfish. Thank you. 
You know, I don't know if this is the after effects of playing Eternity or just me having broken weapons, but so far the bosses have been super easy. But you want to know what isn't easy? World of Tanks, the sponsor of this video. World of Tanks is a fun and engaging free to player multiplayer game in which you can play as a tank. Do I even need to say more? Well, I kind of have to because I signed a contract and you have to fight other tanks. Sounds simple, but trust me, it can get complicated. With a collection of over 800 tanks to choose from, including tank destroyers, artillery, light, medium and heavy tanks, basically any tank you can think of, they have it. The gameplay is also super strategic, requiring teamwork and coordination with your allies to outmaneuver the competition. As you gain experience, you can modify and upgrade your tank, transforming it into a true force to be reckoned with in more than 40 battle arenas. And if that's not persuasive enough, let me sweeten the pot a bit. For new players who click on the link in the description and use my invite code displayed on the screen, you'll get some awesome in-game rewards, such as this cool tank, 250,000 credits, 7 days access to premium, and 3 rental tanks that you can use to outplay your opponents. Honestly guys, you should really try the game out. It's free, fun, and engaging. So don't wait any longer, join the battle today. Back to the video. And out of the queen jellyfish dropped an NPC called the Diver Man, who could provide me with an air tank so that if I ever ran out of breath underwater, it refilled my air automatically. To go along with that, I also got an accessory called Sea Breeze Pendant from the queen jellyfish, which gave me some cool underwater buffs. Afterwards, I beat the queen jellyfish again to get the jelly pond wand which was kind of lame but anyways i was now able to mine the marine blocks and make my way into the aquatic depths biome and there i found a new ore called aquite and i got a bunch of it I also found a magic weapon in a chest called Magic Conch which shoots bubbles and a bard weapon called Steel Drum and this one is really cool and you'll see why. I also finally found some Hermes boots. Then with that I had everything I needed. The Steel Drum was a bard weapon which shot a wave but it also used up a lot of the bard energy. But if you match your shots with the timer it used no energy which made this one of my favorites even though I never really used it. I also found out that the Jelly Pond wand summoned jellyfish when it hit the ground so that made it more usable. After making aquate bars I crafted a magic weapon called the geyser staff and also a bard weapon called the scuba curve i also wanted to make the depth diver armor but i realized that it's more useful when playing with friends and since i don't have any i moved on the geyser staff spawned a geyser on the floor that moved across the floor while damaging enemies and the scuba curve was a flamethrower like weapon which pushed enemies back you have any idea how fast i am the next boss up was called Viscount, and to spawn it, I had to find an underground blood chamber, which could be tracked down by using a thing called Grim Pointer, and you can't craft it, so I had no idea where to get it. But that was a problem for future me. For now, I went and talked to the blacksmith NBC to get a crafting station he sold, because by using that, I could craft items using a material called Petal, which is dropped by jungle enemies, and I also needed a material called U Wood, which is dropped by goblins, so that meant that I had to fight the goblin army, which I was planning on doing anyways to get the goblin tinkerer. After I took out the goblin army, I crafted a shadow flame staff, which inflicted the shadow flame debuff on enemies. I also got some petals, and in the middle of that, I had an NPC movement called the confused zombie, and he ended up selling me the grim pointer, which I needed. Then after finding the goblin tinkerer, I made some specter boots, and I found the meteorite, which I used to make meteorite armor. Afterwards, I went to the jungle to look for more petals. In the middle of that, I also found a hive, so I beat the queen bee. After that, I explored a bit more and headed home. I crafted two magic weapons and frost spark boots. The blooming staff shot a burst of projectiles which gave brief life recovery when I damaged enemies. And the jungle's wrath was just broken. Like actually broken for pre-hard mode since its damage was insane. And with that, I was ready to take on the next boss. And by using the grim pointer, I was able to find the underground blood chamber. And in the middle of it was an altar which was used to spawn the boss, but I forgot to get the unholy shards, so when I got those, I was able to spawn in the Viscount. Oh my god, and look at him! Bro, was a little cutie patootie!
For the rest of day 14, I then beat the Viscount over and over again until I eventually got the magic weapon it dropped. It's called the Vampire Scepter and it shot beams that healed the player. Afterwards, I crafted a bundle of balloons and when it was night, I got ready to fight Skeletron. And after beating him, I got a status message which will be important soon. When I entered the dungeon, I noticed a rare enemy near me called the Raging Minotaur. But for some reason, I couldn't mine the blocks, so I had to improvise. And when I got there, I saw a Minotaur enemy and also a new skeleton type enemy called the Dark Steel Knight. And when I killed the skeleton, I got a new material called Dark Steel Ingot, which is used to make a lot of new weapons and also an armor set. The enemies in the dungeon also dropped a new material called Spirit Droplet, which I needed to craft some new magic weapons. Right after, I saw the life form analyzer point to an entity called Peculiar Mirror. And when I found it, it gave me a prompt. And when I clicked touch, I spawned the next boss called the Illusionist. And bro didn't stand a chance. Or so I thought, cause he had a second phase. And once again, he didn't stand a chance. But he had a third phase, and he still didn't stand a chance. He did drop me a cool item called Mage Hand that allowed me to do this. At this point, I also checked the next boss I had to fight called the Corpse Plume, and I didn't read the whole requirements for spawning it, and I don't know why, but I thought it spawned in the dungeon, so I spent so long in the dungeon just farming enemies and looking around, until I eventually realized that it spawns in the jungle. However, since I now had a lot of dark steel, I made a couple of weapons, and also dark steel armor, which gave me a lot of mobility and a dash. The weapons I crafted were pretty interesting, specifically the phantom camera which took a screenshot of enemies and stunned them. The bloody wand shot a burst of blood which gave the enemy a debuff that made it so that every shot from the wand dealt more damage. And finally the arsenal staff which was a summoner weapon that looked interesting. It spawned a sword and a shield that got stronger for every summoner slot you have. Then I headed to the jungle to look for the corpse bloom and I was able to find it pretty easily. And the fight was pretty easy so I let my guard down which is why I lost to it. Then I found it again and absolutely destroyed it. It dropped me two sentries. One was a healer sentry which shot spores that if touched increased your life regeneration and defense. And the other one was a flower that shot a poisonous ball. Next up I wanted to fight deer cops. And the reason I didn't skip this one was because I wanted to take my revenge after what it did to me last playthrough. At this point, there's only 3 bosses left before the wall. The upcoming 2 bosses are called Granite Energy Storm and Buried Champion, who you fight in the Granite Biome and the Marble Biome. I first started looking for a Granite Biome and after about 6 minutes of searching, I found one. And there, enemies were dropping a new material called Granite Energy Core, which I needed to craft a spawner for the Energy Storm. And once I had enough, I crafted the Unstable Core. And when I used it in the Granite Biome, I spawned the Granite Energy Storm. The storm dropped me a magic weapon which gave me a barrier that dealt damage to enemies that got close. Then right after I went to the marble biome and started expanding it, while also farming enemies to get bronze alloy fragments. Then I crafted the ancient blade, but before I could use it, I found this thing called bizarre rock formation and when I killed it, I spawned the buried champion.
the champion dropped me a shield and wings, which had a pretty short fight time, but they were still super useful. Then I beat the champion again and again until I got its magic weapon, which I don't really need to explain. Now there's only one more boss left before the wall called the Star Scouter. And to craft the spawner, I needed a material called Strange Alien Tech which was dropped by a UFO. And I had no clue where to find this thing so I looked it up and it apparently only spawns near a meteorite. So I went to the Crimson and started breaking hearts. And after a really long time, I didn't have any spawn, but thankfully I had some meteorite left over so I put some down in hopes of it spawning the UFO, and it worked. I was able to get UFOs to spawn and eventually get the alien tech. I crafted the star caller, and when I reached space, I used it and spawned the star scouter. Like the other bosses, I farmed this boss for a while until it eventually dropped its mage weapon. Which was insanely good because it shot a burst of lightning that bounced across enemies and I assumed that it would do really good against the hungries when I fight the wall. Afterwards I made my way to hell and I started mining hellstone to see if I could maybe use it to craft anything. and I made this weapon called Thor's Hammer which caught my eye because of its description. Also an obsidian staff and an inferno staff. The inferno staff shot a bolt that spawned a pillar of fire when it hit the ground. And Thor's Hammer was interesting because it had different modes that you can switch by right clicking on it. However, as cool as that was, the damage was just awful. Or maybe it was good, but I never realized because my jungle staff was broken. And finally the obsidian staff, which like Thor's hammer had a cool idea but it was just awful. Because you could charge up a boulder that did more damage the longer you held it, but its range and damage were both awful and I don't know why but I was expecting it to shoot out the boulder farther when charged up, so that made it more disappointing. Anyways, I made a double obsidian bridge and got some new drip, then made my way to hell to set up an arena, and I spawned in the wall of flesh. So now we're officially in hard mode and from this point on the pacing became a lot faster since there's only 5 thorium bosses left and let me just use this moment to say that I really like this mod and I know that thorium is working on an update that adds a bunch of new stuff so I definitely want to do another playthrough of this mod therefore I have a proposition because I want to make sure that if I do another playthrough you guys will enjoy it if this video gets let's say 6000 likes which I know is a big number but the support on this channel has been insane lately I'll do another playthrough of this mod using the bard class because I really want to explore that class more anyways after beating the wall i beat it again to get the mage emblem then i took out the altars to get hard mode ore and i looked at the first boss i had to fight called the borean strider who spawns randomly during blizzards then i went mining i got some palladium and i returned home to make a pickaxe and i noticed that you could use it to craft a palladium staff which shot a bolt that exploded after a while then i got some mithril and I killed this coin bag and it dropped a soul of night which I realized could be used to make another material called unfathomable flesh which you can use to make flesh armor and weapons. So one of my goals was to craft that. Then while in hell I also realized that enemies dropped a new soul called soul of plight which could be used to make an item called key of fire and these keys in vanilla are used to spawn mimics. So that made me wonder if that's what this one is used for too. So I started farming enemies to get more souls. I also farmed some enemies to get soul of lights and then I got some adamantite and finally headed home. I made a couple of magic weapons, terra spark boots, 
and adamantite armor. The first weapon was called Dynasty Fan, which just shot a bunch of wind blades. And the next one was Geomancer's Brush, which was interesting because it had different modes that you can cycle through. And the last one, the Stalagmite, spawned spikes on the ground that burned enemies and it did some really good damage. Then once again, I went to hell to farm enemies for a while. Once I had enough Soul of Plights, I made the key of fire and by using it I was able to spawn the Hellbringer Mimic. It didn't drop anything too useful but it could drop a magic weapon, however for now I didn't feel like farming more enemies. At this point I believed I was ready to fight the Borean Strider, so I went to the snow biome and started a blizzard. And after a while I had the Borean Strider spawn. However, I didn't have an arena ready for this fight, so I ended up losing. But then I made a small arena which I thought might help, and one of the enemies dropped me its spawner, so I was able to easily spawn it. The Strider did drop me a cool weapon called the Borean Fang Staff that shot icicles. Right after that I made a Void Lens and headed to hell to fight the Fallen Beholder. Beating the Fallen Beholder caused a new ore to spawn into my world called Lodestone. But before I went looking for that, I wanted some of the items it dropped. So I beat it again and this time it spawned an ore called Valadium. At this point I had another NPC move in called the Weapons Master, who sold some weapons but more importantly I could hire him. And he helped me a bit, I guess. Anyways, the Beholder dropped me a pretty cool mount and also a fire staff that was cool. Then I farmed the Hellbringer Mimic until I got the magic weapon it dropped. Which was ass, but it did pierce, so eh. Anyways, I then went mining for Valadium and Lodestone. I also got a lot of Ikers so I could craft unfathomable fleshes. Then using the Lodestone, I made a Lodestone Staff. And using Valadium, I made a Valadium Staff. And finally, by using the unfathomable flesh, I made flesh armor. The Lodestone Staff created little shockwaves when the projectiles touched the ground. The Valadium Staff pierced and did this. And the Flesh Armor made it so that when I damaged enemies, they dropped little chunks of flesh that healed you when you picked them up. I also finally made some new wings to replace my champion wings from the buried champion. I then started the Blood Moon because I needed an accessory one of the enemies dropped. And during the Blood Moon, I ran into furries. Anyways, during the entire Blood Moon, I didn't get what I was looking for, but after the Blood Moon was over, there was one enemy remaining and it dropped me the accessory. So that was super lucky. I used it to craft a Murky Catalyst and it increased my maximum mana and while also making my every 6th shot not use any mana. At this point, I was ready to fight the mechanical bosses. However, it was morning, so in the meantime, I beat Queen Slime. Then I made a key of tides and used it to spawn a submerged mimic, which was pretty generic. I know I mentioned this before, but I don't know if this is the after effects of eternity or not, but everything felt super bland to me at this point. Anyways, once it was night, I started attempts at the mechs. I started off with the destroyer, and by using Geomancer's brush, I was able to do some insane damage and easily take out the destroyer. Now, 
Next up were the twins, which I fought so many times that there was no way for me to lose this fight, which is why I really let my guard down and almost came close to dying a couple of times. However, at the end of the day, literally, I was able to beat them. While I waited for Knight to fight Skeltron Prime, I made a weapon called Plasma Staff, which at first I thought was garbage. But I then read its description and realized that by moving left and right repeatedly, I could generate friction and charge the staff. And once fully charged, the staff shot a big electric ball that did some great damage. Then once it was night, it was time to fight the last mechanical boss. Now that I had all of the souls, I was able to make a lot of upgrades. I first made a new crafting station called the Soul Forge, then using that, I made a bunch of new magic weapons. The Snow White, like the Geomancer's brush, had different modes that you can cycle through. The Black Hole Cannon sucked enemies in. The Wonder Wand also had different modes that you can cycle through. And the twins ire was probably my favorite cause it did some insane damage. To spawn the next boss I needed pumpkins, so I planted some. And in the meantime I headed to the jungle to get chlorophyte and life roots. I found a lot of chlorophyte but no life roots. So for now I headed home and I made a chlorophyte staff, which was kind of like an upgrade to the jungle's wrath from earlier. Then I got the pumpkins. And I made this new material called Titanic Bars, and using those I made Titan Armor. So now I was ready to fight the next boss. I headed to the graveyard biome and offered the pumpkins to the altar, and spawned the Lich. The Lich dropped me this magic weapon called the Wither Staff, which sprayed magic that withered enemies. Then on day 30, I went to the jungle to make an arena to fight Plantera on, and in the middle of that, I remembered that I hadn't gotten any life roots, so I went looking for them. And I even zoomed out for maximum efficiency, however, I was only able to find 3. So for now, I gave up on that and decided to fight Plantera. On attempt 1, I came close, but I lost. And then on the next attempt, I beat it. Beating Plantera gave me some interesting messages. Something had happened in the aquatic depths biome, and a new ore had spawned into the world called Illumite. However, I wasn't able to craft anything too important with it, so I decided it wasn't worth spending time on. At home, I made a small mushroom biome so that the truffle can move in and I can get Shroomite. Then I went to the aquatic depths biome to see what the message meant, and down there, enemies were dropping a new material called Abyssal Chitin, Chitin which was used to make some nice mage gear. However, they started dropping this after beating the wall, I just hadn't realized. I was super confused because I spent a long Long time looking around only to see a couple of new enemies and nothing else but as I was planning to head home this happened Yeah, so apparently I had killed an enemy called Aquatic Hallucination, and that caused the boss to spawn. Afterwards, I went to the dungeon to farm enemies and get ectoplasm. While I was there, I also got a new material called Dark Matter. Then upon returning home, I first made a Master Ninja Gear, and then a weapon called Legacy, and one called Dark Grip. Legacy shot homing skulls, and the Dark Grip spawned hands at your cursor. Afterwards, I made a new material called Concentrated Thorium, which I turned into another material called Demon Blood Shard, and using that, I made a new armor set called Demon Blood Armor, which increased my max life by 100. I also bought a new mount called Nimbus from an NPC, and it said that it summoned a mountable wyvern, which sounded cool, but I wasn't expecting this. 
Then I finally got enough life roots to max out my health. I then made a lizard infatuation bomb, which clears out a huge chunk of space when used in front of the altar. And I headed to the temple and after dying, I used the materials I got from the enemies to craft a magic weapon called Erupting Flare. Then I made my way to the altar and used the infatuation bomb to clear some space. And I fought the golem, who, do I even need to say anything? Pathetic. At this point, there's only two Thorium bosses left and a couple of vanilla bosses left. I first made these bombs called City Busters to use in the ocean biome, which are used to clear out huge chunks of space. I went to the ocean and I used a city bomb, and just one of them did this. Anyways, after setting up an arena, I started farming enemies until eventually I found the one I was looking for, and after killing it, I spawned the forgotten one. The forgotten one dropped me a mage weapon called Old God's Vision, which shot this bolt which gave enemies a debuff that made it so every time they came into contact with other enemies, they damaged them. Afterwards, I went to the mushroom biome to look for a truffle worm. I started working on making the biome more habitable for truffle worms to spawn, but I actually ended up finding one super quickly. So I headed to the ocean and spawned the duke. And the duke dropped me this new item called soul anchor which made it so that right clicking set a marker at my current location and if i left clicked it not only teleported me there but also made my health the same as it was when i set the marker so this was extremely broken i then beat the duke again a lot of times until i got the razor blade typhoon which i could upgrade into another weapon but before that i needed unicorn horns so after a while of farming enemies i eventually got some and by using those i upgraded it into the nuclear fury which like the razor blade typhoon shot homing projectiles except now they were bolts instead of typhoons then i put a fresh fit on and went to bed and once it was night i went to the hello to fight the empress to get empress wings and a soaring insignia And right after being the Empress, I went to the dungeon to fight the cultist. The cultist dropped me a bunch of weapons. Firstly, this one called the Ancient Light. That was pretty much the same as the Nuclear Fury, except it caused a small explosion after hitting enemies. The Ancient Flame, which used a lot of mana but also did a lot of damage. The Ancient Frost, which was amazing for multiple targets. And then after beating him again, the Ancient Spark, which was pretty bad. Since I now had the Ancient Manipulator, I was now able to craft a new material called Terrarium Core, which was made by combining all of the vanilla Terraria bars. I was only able to craft enough to be able to craft one item, and I chose a mage weapon called the Terrarium Sage Staff, which shot a ball that split into smaller balls and home. Afterwards, I went mining so that I could have enough materials to get a ton of Terrarium cores. Once I had enough, I made Terrarium Armor, Terrarium Wings, and Terrarium Particle Sprinters. I could also make another accessory called Terrarium Defender, however, I needed a Paladin Shield in order to craft it, so I started farming Paladins. And I spent so long looking for it, but I didn't get one. However, after all that, I did realize that you could craft it by using the materials dropped by the Paladins. So I crafted that. I also needed an Ankh shield, but that was super easy to craft. 
because the alchemist NPCs literally sold everything I needed to craft it. Then I crafted the terrarium defender. I also had some leftover cores so I crafted a summon weapon too. That spawned a cool spinny thing. Anyways, I believed at this point I was ready to take on the pillars. I started with the nebula pillar so I could make mage equipment. I used the fragments to make a cat's eye great staff, a teleogic imposition, and a nebula blaze. And after selling both of my kidneys to reforge my weapons, I finally tried them out. The cat's eye great staff spawned a nebula at my cursor which I could freely move around, and a teleologic imposition was an orb which upon hitting enemies spawned a small storm that did some amazing damage. Next up was the solar pillar, and even though it took a couple of attempts, I was able to eventually take it down. Then the Vortex Pillar. And then finally the Stardust Pillar. And it was finally time to fight Moon Lord. Oof. Almost there guys, bear with me just a bit longer, only one boss left. I then beat Moonlord again to get enough Luminite to make Nebula armor, however that actually ended up being worse than my Terrarium armor. I then bought a bunch of Moonlord treasure bags because I needed enough Luminite to make a healer set. Not because I wanted to use it, but because it just looked sick. Then I crafted a Doomsayer's coin, which is used to spawn the last boss when used at night. And once it was night, I spawned in the Primordials. And on attempt 1, I messed up and I needed to get healed. So I tried going to the nurse, but... Let me in! Let me in, please! So before the next attempt, I moved the nurse into my arena and it was time for attempt 2. which was extremely slow and very easy because not only were the attacks super stale and easily predictable but the primordials also had a ton of health so it took a really long time before i was able to get them low enough where their next phase started And it was kind of harder, but still not hard enough, which is why on my first attempt, I beat the Primordials. Or so I thought, kind of. Because once I took out the last one, another boss, or more specifically, I guess their real form came out, called the Dream Eater. And I could already guess that these guys were gonna have a second farm because the first phase was super easy. And oh my god, this fight was actually hard. The jump and difficulty from the primordials to the dream eater was insane and now that I knew how hard this fight was, the first phase of this fight 
was an actual pain to sit through because it was so boring and time confusing compared to the next phase which is completely the opposite. So I started farming Moonlord until I eventually got the last prism and lunar flare. Oh, and I also got this throw weapon called the Angel's End, which... Anyways, then I replaced my soaring insignia with a celestial magnet because I thought the damage increase would be more useful than the infinite flight. Both the last prism and lunar flare did some insane damage and by using those I was able to take down the primordials a lot quicker. Which was still a really long time, but it was a lot more bearable now. And so with that, I could easily focus on the Dream Eater now. So I was able to take down the last boss. Yippee! The primordials dropped me some interesting items, but the only one I really needed was the inferno essence because I needed it to craft mage equipment. I first used it to craft pyromancer armor. Then by using the dormant hammer dropped by the primordials, I made Mjolnir and also a magic weapon called the Northern Lights and a pretty cool mount called Otherworldly Rune. The Northern Lights spawned like a cloud over my cursor which rained down projectiles that did insane damage. And then Mjolnir was kind of disappointing because it was essentially just a re-sprouted Paladin's Hammer. Which isn't a bad thing but I guess I hyped myself a bit too much because I was expecting something completely different. But this one also spawned a shield around you when you right clicked. Then I beat the Primordials again to get enough essences to make myself more endgame weapons. I also once again made healer armor because all healer armors just look so sick. The Devil's Claws slashed at the position of the cursor and when it hit enemies, it created small explosions. The Almanac of Agony shot homing skulls that also caused explosions. And finally, I also made a bard weapon because I wanted to see what it did and it was pretty much just a bard version of the last prism. And with that, I guess we're done with this mod. So yeah, that's Storium. And you might have already noticed, but this was supposed to be a 100 days video, but I ended up finishing it a lot quicker than I thought I would. So I didn't feel like spending the rest of the days just like building and stuff. I have a really quick announcement and some messages. As you know, these videos take a lot of time and effort, and I really appreciate the support I've received so far. That's why I wanted to introduce something new to this channel, memberships. Yay. But before we proceed any further, let me be clear that joining this is completely optional, and it isn't something that you should feel compelled to do. However, However, if you truly feel like throwing money away, let me tell you about the plan. There's only one tier and it costs $4.99 to join. And if you do choose to burn your money, then you'll get access to a couple of these cutesy emojis designed by me and also these super spiffy badges to showcase next to your name. However, I doubt we'll ever see anything past green, so I might have to redo them. In terms of perks, you get early access to videos a whole day before anyone else. You also get your name listed at the end of each video and some other benefits which are listed on the screen. The membership program can really help 
help me make better content but like i said before this isn't something that you should feel like you're being forced to do guys trust me i'm not rubbing my hands together maliciously while i say this but yeah thank you so much for all the support i really appreciate it next video up should be infernum unless i decide to do a smaller video in between but so far the recording has been going super smoothly and i just beat the devourer of gods so it shouldn't be too much longer before i finish the playthrough after that however there's a slight gap that i have to figure out how to fill i'm thinking maybe a modded minecraft video like arlcraft or sky factory but i don't know give me some ideas in the comments also one last thing i usually try and update you guys in the community tab but if you would like more frequent updates then you should follow my twitter because it's easier to post on there and that's about it for this video thanks a lot to world of tanks for sponsoring this video make sure to check them out and thank you so much for watching have a nice day